You know, when it comes to Newburn and Pepsi, we all know Caleb Bradham invented it, and this pharmacy is where he made a lot of his name and fame. But like most relationships, it's not just that simple. When it comes to Caleb Bradham and Pepsi, let's just say it's complicated. And the full story has never really been told. But there is one man who knows the story better than anybody. It is Jerry Avery. Jerry, come on in here. How you doing? Hey, buddy. How you doing? What made you get so involved in this process of wanting to learn about Caleb Bradham and Pepsi and the real story that's behind it? Well, my family uh, came here very early in 1710. So we have a lot of our own family ties here. What was the first thing that got you hooked on to Pepsi and Caleb Bradham? Uh, I have a cousin here downtown that's an auctioneer. And so I bought my first Pepsi bottle through that auction. And, uh, and, and that's sort of where we, where we started. How long has this journey of discovery been going on? When did you really start getting into the history that had never been told before? Uh, about five years ago. About five years ago, my wife and I do uh, a ton of uh, research and uh, digging into old documents and, and the library and combing through all those documents. Well, everybody thinks this was the start and end of Pepsi in Newburn and Caleb Bradham, but it's not. Caleb Bradham was actually born in Duplin County. Correct. Oh, what year was he born? 1867. Okay, and then he had a complicated educational history before he even got to Newburn. And he, so, he did. He uh, did. Just uh, give me this little brief uh, synopsis so of he, where he went. He attended medical school in uh, Chapel Hill, and he ultimately went to pharmacy school and uh, did internship in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, there were hardships along the way with his with his uh, uh, with his family, and he had to end up going back home at some point. And ultimately, it brought him here. Now we're going to find out where Caleb Bradham used to be. It is a walk around Newburn with a lot of history you didn't know about Caleb Bradham and Pepsi. So where do we start on this tour? Where was Caleb Bradham's first footsteps in this town? We're going to start about a block down on Pollock Street. Pepsi Cola, it's a spot, 12 ounces, that's a lot. And here we are. So in 1890, Caleb Bradham was living in Duplin County. He was a census taker for the 1890 census. And unfortunately, that document is destroyed because of fire. So there, we don't have any of the information from it, or at least a lot of the information. Uh, but at some point after that, Caleb moved to New Bern, and this was a boarding house, and this was the first residence that he lived at in 1891, in early 1891. What was he doing here in New Bern at that time? So when he first came to New Bern, he got a job working as a school teacher and he was teaching uh, handwriting and penmanship here in town. So nothing to do with pharmacy, Pepsi, or any of that stuff? Absolutely like nothing. Nope. He was recommended by the president of the college at UNC as a good fit uh, for the position, and he immediately came here and, and became a teacher. So how did he go from being a teacher in penmanship to becoming the inventor of Pepsi? So uh, very shortly after he began teaching, within probably six months or so, uh, the Vance School that he was working at here in town closed and moved out of New Bern. Well, he didn't want to leave New Bern, so he and another teacher went in business together above one of the Duffy businesses and created a night school and started teaching on their own. So they had their, his first legitimate business on his own and uh, they were teaching uh, uh, young men coming out of high school, getting ready for college, helping them be prepared to go to college. Okay. And we're not sure exactly where that happened. It was on, uh, in one of the Duffy buildings, uh, and there, but there were a lot of Duffys here at that time. Next, we're going to go to Craven Street near South Point. So here we are. We are across from what would have been 24 Craven Street in 1893. That would have been Bradham and Smith feed and seed. And he, after he uh, left the teaching business, which didn't take, wasn't very long, he realized that there wasn't enough money in it, I'm sure. Uh, he decided to go in part owner with another gentleman who was getting close to retiring. And it was called Bradham and Gates feed and at some point, 
Gates was out, and then another gentleman by the name of Smith came in, and then it was Bradham and Smith, and they did feed and seed uh, till uh, very, very late 1893. Did the seed business not go well for them? What, what happened with that business? Um, I think that, that it was successful. We have some primary source documents that talk about some of the things he was doing uh, within our collection that we have. Um, you have to remember, when he came here, he was 24 years old. All he wanted was to to make a name for himself. It's just, where can I do the next thing? It was obvious that he had a, a love of medicine and a love of, of the medical field. So I'm sure that that was always in the back of his mind and, and he just needed uh, a segue to be able to get to that point. But what people need to remember is that at that time you had to have four years of internship before you could become licensed. By the time he got to Newburn, he literally only had about a year and a half to two years under his belt. He still wasn't in any position to be a pharmacist because he had not done all of the required work. All right, so he wants to get into this pharmacy business. Where are we headed next? Middle Street, uh, not quite toward the Pepsi store. All right, so those are the old Pepsi store. The Pepsi store is down there. Correct. And where was his pharmacy? The very first pharmacy was this building here. Okay. But it was at that time, that building was one building, but it was two separate businesses, a left and a right. He was the business on the right. So catch us up on time. What year are we now? We are in December, specifically December the 21st of 1893. And he gets into the pharmacy business. He buys into the pharmacy business. There was a pharmacist with the last name of Green and he passed away and his intern or his understudy was Harry Brock. And Harry Brock was managing the pharmacy for the estate of Pharmacist Green. And Caleb had enough money to buy in and became the senior partner with Harry. And they bought the pharmacy, the building or the, the business behind me. And they began as Bradham and Brock Pharmacy in December 21st of 1893. Now, all the signage and history books are telling me that's the year Pepsi was invented as Brad's drink, 1893. But you are here to, I don't know if dispute the claim, but you cannot find evidence to support that. <clears throat> well, here's what we know that, that we can, that we can substantiate. We know that because we talked about earlier that Caleb had to have at least four years of internship to be able to become a pharmacist. At that point, he's not a pharmacist, but Harry Brock is. So they partnered together, and it's, we speculate that Caleb was working through Harry to finish up what he would need to have his two years of internship to become an actual licensed pharmacy in the state of North Carolina. And so uh, they bought this pharmacy together and they began working together. But based on advertisements that we found in not only Newburn, but also in Raleigh and other cities, they were looking for a second pharmacist to work with Harry, because you have to remember that there's still a feed and seed business over on Craven Street that's still a viable business that's operating. Somebody has to be in charge of that, and Bradham is doing that. And you have found nothing that says Brad drank or anything anywhere in 1893, which is what the popular theory has been. That is correct. When is the first mention of Brad's drink, which became Pepsi, when is that ever seen in any of your findings? We feel like what happened was as the story is told over time, dates become a little off or, or, or through the storytelling, we talk about him buying a pharmacy in 1893, not necessarily that he invented a soda in 1893. In the fall of 1894, Harry and uh, Caleb buy out the pharmacy at the corner, what we know today as the Pepsi store or Bradham's Pharmacy. And the corner offered him a, a, just a better place for, for business, so that's where we're gonna head to next. We have uh, put them in this building in 
uh, around September, fall of September of 1894, and they bought the business that belonged to pharmacist Gaskell. And so Gaskell was moving back to the western part of the state, and so he sold out his business to Caleb and to Harry. In March of 1895, Harry got pneumonia, and he died. He passed away at, at the very young age of 24, 25 years old. He and, he and Caleb were about a year apart, year or so apart in age. You gotta remember, Caleb is about 25 now, 26. He still does not have everything he needs to be able to walk in and be a licensed pharmacist. So he's still got to get to that point. So Harry dies in March. He's, uh, he's now on his own. Caleb is now on his own. And he goes and he takes the test to become a pharmacist down in Moorhead City. And in July of 1895, he gets his pharmacy license. We confirmed that with the UNC School of Pharma Pharmacy. Uh, we, we sent some uh, requests to them, and they provided us that the first license he ever had anywhere in the world was July 19th of 1895, and he was licensed through the UNC School of Pharmacy. So now he can legally start mixing things. That's correct. And so when is the first sign that you can find of that he came up with this thing called Brad's Drink? So we have some newspaper articles in 1896 where he is uh, putting concoctions together and he's working on this energy drink. It's ironic that we talk about energy drinks today, but he was, you have to remember, along with uh, all of the other things that he's doing, he's also in the Naval Militia and he is a very avid bike rider. So he participates in bike riding events and he creates a, uh, an energy drink we don't call them drinks back then. They're, you know, they're just mixtures of things that they're putting together. And he called it swoosh. And that was what he named it. And there is an actual, uh, and we have an article where he's talking about that and he's creating it. And he's invited the newspaper in whenever he has these new concoctions to try it and, uh, and see what they think. And apparently that one was pretty popular. How did it go from swoosh to Brad's drink? Well, we don't know that we don't know that Brad's drink is what came from ah, that. Okay. We do know that uh, there were there were he was interested because there was such a popularity with the cola nut and the sodas that were out. We won't name the one that was the competitor <laughs> at the time, uh, but the reality is uh, he didn't have a cola drink to his credit at that point. So there was only one that he could serve in this store to his customers. We won't name them, but, but that, that soda was actually being served in 1897 right here. So what point do we know that Brad's drink became a thing? We don't. We don't, we don't have anything that, that, that I know of that, that other than just uh, local lore that talks about uh, that talks about his buddies called it Brad's drink. I'm confident that his buddies all called it that. You know, I'm going to get a Brad's drink. Yeah. And uh, but obviously he did not market that, so there wouldn't be any documents for us to look at, mm -hmm. other than just the speculation of the conversation that was going on. Okay. Well, all the history books tell me that it became Pepsi in 1898. Is there documentation for that? Yes. Obviously, there is a lot of good information. Uh, even here in the Pepsi store, they've got the the when they first trademarked it. Uh, when Mary Bayard Wooten did the, the logo for him here in town. So that's well documented that in 1898, uh, it became Pepsi-Cola. Okay. It was like Pep-Cola or something at first, wasn't it? Well, he, so when he applied for the, uh, the trademark, mm -hmm. what he found out was that he was denied because there was a, another soda out there that was already had a really close name so <clears throat> but that that soda was defunct it was out of uh, up north so he went up north he made an offer to the people that owned it and because it was nobody was making it 
He bought that trademark. He brought it back to Newburn, <clears throat> and then he created, because he owned Pepcola at that point, he also trademarked Pepsi Cola. So now he has two that he's doing together. We actually have a label where he made syrup for Pep Cola. Um, it, one, of, one of my collecting friends yeah. up in Virginia has a label that is, you know, Pep Cola. I, uh, the history books tell me Pepsin was supposed to be in it, but is that, do we know <coughs> anything about the concoction itself? Um, he called it the Pepsin drink, but it doesn't appear that Pepsin was involved. There were properties within the ingredients that he put in Pepsi Cola that, uh, that made it have the same effect as if it was Pepsi. We are on Craven Street and we are between Pollock and South Front. The building behind me, the tan colored building, we have two primary source documents, both uh, maps and uh, newspaper documentation, where he rented this building to be able to do mass uh, syrup making and distribution to uh, his buyers that were, that were buying from him. In 1904, uh, late 1904, he did a test run of Pepsi Cola in bottles. And we have, we have documentation of that. And then around March of 1905, he took possession of 10,000 bottles from the railroad, though they had them railroaded, made and railroaded up to Newburn, and he took possession of those. And he began bottling right here in the Prohibition building behind me Pepsi Cola in bottles. How long was he in this building? Till probably around 06. And obviously he grew out of the pharmacy. Where Pepsi is concerned, he grew out of that building. And then he went to this one and he grew out of this building. And now we've got to uh, expand and we'll go over to Johnson and Hancock Street where the first Pepsi plant was actually created. Right down there behind you is uh, the train depot, the old train depot, right? That is correct, that is correct. Now this just looks like houses behind here. What's going on? So uh, in the mid 60s, uh, here to my right was the was vacant land and that's where the, the graded schools were. And in 1904, 1905, 1906, he made the deal to buy the Bishop building here on this lot behind me and he used it for his bottling operation and his syrup manufacturing and in 1907 he began construction on a three-story building that had a basement and uh, he was doing his bottling there the building was around 45 to 50 feet by 100 feet so in today's uh, when you talk about manufacturing, it's very, very small. Not a large operation in, in the big scheme of things today. But back then, it was, it was, uh, it, it was large. So uh, he, had, he made the home office here, and he was doing his manufacturing here and, and his distribution from this point. Uh, and he added on to the building a couple of times. They added a railroad spur in behind the building. Uh, you know, he was continuing to grow. He was continuing to expand. Uh, you told me he got into some renting at the time here too. Uh, he did. He became a uh, landlord? Uh, he did. So uh, we, we know that he owned over 30 properties in and around New Bern uh, during his time here. And a lot of the houses that are back behind me, the original houses, were, you know, the row houses at that time. He was... Uh, he was renting to his employees that were actually working for him at the at the, the the bottling plant. Where was he living at this point now that he's making a really good living? So he's beginning to move around. Uh, he moved over uh, on another address over on Pollock Street. We're not exactly sure where. There's no maps that, that can give us a specific location. Uh, we're still digging into that. But at around 1900, he moved to the corner of Broad and Hancock uh, across from the telephone company building and the new fireman's museum. Okay. That vacant lot where Darnell's uh, service station was, there was a huge house there and we have pictures of that house
from the past. And he lived there from 1900 to 1908. And in 1908, he purchased the Slover House, which everybody knows is the iconic Bradham House. But he didn't move in right away. He, he, he had to do some work and some remodeling. And so he rented a house on Union Street, which no longer exists today. It's actually part of uh, Johnson Street at the Noose River. It's just a little spur there. He was living there uh, at 1908 and working on the Slover House. It's called the Slover House, but I think I know it for Union occupation during the Civil that War. That is correct. General yep. Burnside's made this his, mm -hmm. his home for a while. And it has a lot of history, a yeah. ton of history. So, uh, but for me, it's the Bradham House. <laughs> and uh, I guess it wasn't in great condition when he took it over, but uh, that's why he had to have it renovated. And he, have he, you're right. And, and you have to remember at this point, he's at the, at the height of his financial career uh, as far as money goes. He had the means to be able uh, to do that. And, and by this time, you know, he's got several children. Uh, his daughter Mary has been born. Uh, Caleb Darnell uh, uh, Bradham has been born. Uh, a lot of people call him Caleb Jr., but he, he, was, he had a different middle name than Caleb. And, uh, and George was, was, you know, on the way or, or, or here. And uh, so he's got a family, a wife and children at this point. And he was raising a lot of them in this house? Yep. Okay. Uh, how long was he in this house? Do you know? You know, Pepsi bankrupted in 23, and so not long after that, he had to make some decisions, and he had to downsize, obviously. So he subdivided the property. There's actually a house out in the back, and he sold the big house, and he moved into what would have been what we know as the, the kitchen or the slave quarters during the Civil War, and that, that became his home until he, until he passed away. So when he was still at the height, though, in the big house here, um, he didn't uh, just stay within his uh, pharmacy, he expanded? He did, he did. So around the same time as he's doing what he's doing here, he buys a, uh, rents a building at the corner of Broad Street and uh, Middle Street, what we know today is the Chelsea. When he built the second location, uh, the first location you have to remember was late 1800s. It's primitive at this point. Uh, we're, we're 15 years into the future and he's bigger and better. That's, that was Caleb's way. And so he bought into this building, uh, rented this building, and he made a state-of-the-art soda shop pharmacy, a place that the locals here in Newbern could go and enjoy a Pepsi uh, and spend time with their friends. And it was very ornate. It had the latest and greatest of everything that you could want in a, in a public pharmacy setting. What we know today is a, as a soda shop. All right, how long was he in this location? So we're not sure how long it actually lasted. Um, my guess would be that uh, uh, our speculation is, obviously it was around 1913, 14, we know he opened this, this location. And obviously within 10 years, the company is bankrupt. It had to do with the sugar future and the sugar market. That's very well documented. Uh, and, and I'll mention that not only did it affect him, it affected uh, the Hershey Company. Coca-Cola was involved in that. Everybody that used sugar was affected by that. And those smaller companies just didn't make it. When the bankruptcy happened, which you say is well documented, what happened? Uh, what he, did he do next? Uh, he, doesn't, he sells Pepsi off. Correct. Uh, who's he sell it to? Uh, well, he had to give it to his investor, which was the Craven Holdings Company. They kept it for about a year, and they sold it to the Old Dominion Bottling Company in Richmond, Virginia. And Old Dominion ran it until the early 30s, and then they bankrupt. They went bankrupt, and they had to sell it, and it obviously went off to New York. And that's where it... That's where it is today. But yet, Pepsi still is distributed or still made in New Bern? It is, yes. So after uh, the bankruptcy in 23, uh, the home office moves to Richmond, Virginia, but you still got a franchise bottler here. Uh, by 1924, L.J. Taylor is bottling Pepsi right here on the corner of South Front and Craven Street. 
Any idea how long they were in here bottling at this location? Uh, we don't know exactly how long they bottled it, but my, as best we can speculate, probably until uh, the Minjis acquired the, the franchise in 1935. So Caleb, 1923, goes bankrupt, sells it. What happens to him? What does he do after that? Uh, he's still in the pharmacy business uh, down at the corner, the original. The, so back the, to the corner we Back go. to the corner, and he... Uh, he, he runs that till probably the early 30s. His health is declining. Caleb passed away in 1934. He had a stroke. So we are now at Cedar Grove Cemetery. And way here in the back, I was looking for the big Pepsi monument, but this is it. This is Caleb Bradham's grave. Uh, just the simple dates here. Yep. And then it looks like somebody added in the inventor of Pepsi Cola. Who would do such a thing? So uh, after Caleb died, all he had was the, the stone, you know, with his name and for the family. But uh, the Pepsi Cola Collectors Club, which is a, a worldwide club, we, we, you know, we operate here in the United States. Uh, they came together and they uh, gathered the needed funding and they put a monument here uh, for the Bradham family in honor of Caleb and his invention uh, to the world. Sum up Caleb Bradham's life, if you can. I think it's fair to say that he was a complicated man. Uh, he did a lot of things. He had a, a drive that you don't see today uh, in the world as much. He, uh, he had multiple businesses. He was the captain of the naval militia in charge of two uh, militia ships here in Newburn. He was... Uh, uh, he was a county commissioner. He was ultimately the chairman of the county commissioners. He was a mason. He was a shriner. He, you know, he 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 was on all types of committees and boards, and uh, he he sort of helped shape Newburn during the years that he was here. And the family obviously they they moved away. Uh, uh, Caleb Darnell or Caleb Jr. He lived in Newburn for a period of time. Uh, Mary as well. And then George, his youngest son, ultimately moved to the Greensboro area. Then in the 60s, they tore down the plant. And I think that a lot of people regret that now. But sometime around 32, 33, this building burns down. Yeah. So this isn't the original building that he worked in, per se. The location is, but the building itself is not the same place yeah. he worked in. When you walk in the door, you're walking on the original floor. Some of it has been replaced but the original floor and the basement downstairs is original to the building when Caleb was here. This has not been a Pepsi place the whole time though, right? When Correct. his pharmacy, any idea what happened when his pharmacy uh, quit being a pharmacy here? Uh, it just was different retail businesses up until the 100th anniversary. And obviously they came in and they, they rented the space to be used for the 100th anniversary and the rest is history. And the Minjis have kind of been the, the de facto Pepsi people, I guess, ever since. I think that they get credit for revitalizing uh, Pepsi Cola to what we know today from a historical standpoint. Uh, they created the, the Pepsi store uh, for the, the 100th anniversary in 1998. And obviously that was popular and it's still here today. More than anything, we want a museum here in Newburn, and it deserves to be here. Uh, it, it belongs here. Uh, the people here embrace that, I think, and uh, we, we'd love to see it. Now, the one thing I've noticed is I can't find many pictures of Caleb Bradham around. Why is that? Caleb hated having his picture made. Um, the only picture that I know of that we can readily put our hands on is the picture in the Pepsi store of him uh, as the chairman of the county commissioners. He was in a suit and tie. and But every other picture that I've seen or that I have possession of, he, won't, he doesn't look directly at the camera and not family photos. Not, you would think there'd be more out there of him. Uh, it, it appears that Caleb Darnell, Caleb Jr. ended up with a lot of that stuff. 
and and we've heard rumors and we've had people that have talked about seeing it but i have no idea where it's located i'd love to get my hands on it this is part of the whole complicated history of pepsi yep. and some of the missing elements that go along on this treasure hunt that you're on maybe through through this video that we're that we're working on yeah. today uh it will it, it, maybe folks will know and and they'll that stuff will come out